Okay, hello everybody and welcome to another draft on guard. And let's start. So yeah, got a pretty bad opening pack to be honest. Uh Om Nom Nom is really bad. It's like a really bad Dijon siphon, but you have to like draft zombies, and zombies are kinda bad. There's there's a couple good ones, but uh cultivate it's the same sort of thing, a very situational card that requires a specific tribe to work. Uh, Anvil and Arbiter is a good constructed card, but it's really small. Uh, it limits people to two cards a turn, which is good and constructed, but people rarely get around that in draft. Uh, Umbric Ice Crusher is the other bad card. It's <laughs> it just has so low health at every level. It doesn't really matter that it has Breakthrough if you draft Uterra and that it does double damage like it never really lives to do that because it's, they can block it with any creature like even at rank three they can just put a level one creature in front of it and it'll die uh so that leaves us with aetherphage and zrath uh aetherphage isn't incredible in con uh, i'm sorry in draft it's simply a, just like a decent body and it has a good effect like it's nothing to write home about but it's definitely solid uh, Zrath is pretty much the same thing. It's a, it has regenerate too because it gives itself regenerate uh, at each rank. It's pretty above average size or decent size, not not really above average. It's a little below average actually at every rank. But hmm, I don't actually know what's better here. I think in c cases like this where the cards are kind of close, it's generally to pack, pick the faction that you're more comfortable with and I'm not a huge fan of Necrium compared to Uterra so I'm just gonna pick the Aetherphage here and then we have well Nagrath Warrior and Bremwood Guardian are we're not gonna consider them because Nagrath Warrior is much too vanilla it's too small and Bremwood Guardian is much too bad like it's <laughs> has no attack whatsoever so that leaves us with Infernal Visage, One Primordial, and Graveborn Glutton. I'm not a huge fan of Uterra Tempest unless I get some really good, like heroic, like Umbric Lasher. Umbric Lasher is very good in those two colors, or like a Thunder Stomp, which is the dinosaur removal spell. Basically, I want to be drafting dinosaurs if I'm in Uterra Tempest in this format. But Uterra Necrium is, I think, very good. I just don't know whether Infernal Visage or Graveborn Glutton is better. Probably Infernal Visage. Even though there are already pump spells in Uterra, get, giving regenerates very good. Especially with Uterra's like, lasting creatures or big creatures. So I think I'm just going to take Infernal Visage here. And I'm going to take Spirit Leash over Torrent Soldier. Misery Demon and Venom Strike aren't worth talking about. I think Torrent Soldier is a good card. Actually, I think this pick's kind of close. Torrent Soldier is just good, right? And it can do whatever you need it to do. But Spirit Leash is kind of like what I hope to draft in these things because uh, Uterra has a lot of cards like Grove Matriarch or uh, Deep Branch. What's that card called? Deep Branch Druid. The thing that makes it's a one one that makes a Tree Folk every time at every rank, and there's also a Roaming War Claw which makes a little Raptor at every rank. Like, these things give you lots of targets to sacrifice to Spirit Leash, and I'd rather try to make a Spirit Leash focused deck than just have a decent, like a good Torrent Soldier in my deck. So I'm going to take the Spirit Leash. Uh, these two cards are mediocre, so the Shard Plate Delver is what I'm going to take here. Shard Plate Delver is a great card. If you can give it Regenerate, like uh, with the Infernal Visage, they're going to have a tough time taking it down because it just grows every single turn. Uh, Jim Heart Sprout is unplayable, so I'll take the Death Seeker. It works with Spirit Leash, and if I try to pick up some Corpse Crawlers, it'll also work there. Um, hmm, there's a couple cards in this pack that are worth talking about. Legion Rain is not one of them. Uh, I don't think Cavern Serpent is either. Cavern Serpent's good in Uterra Tempest, because it kind of like how in Tempest Necrium, the Wishes of the Faction played last draft. You get a lot of incremental damage on them. Uh, Uterra Tempest is kind of like that. 
with Breakthrough and the Volcano Giants and Mobility, you get a lot of damage on them, and Cavern Serpent actually scales really well in the uh, the last two ranks. It's nothing to impress it in rank 1, but hitting him for 4 or 6 every turn is pretty good. Uh, but regardless, this is not the deck for it. Uh, usually, Utera Necrium decks want to control the Borg and make a huge threat that the opponent just can't deal with. So for that regard, we've got Death Seeker to work with Spirit Leash and our prospective Corpse Crawlers. Uh, Uteradon Mauler, which is not as good as it used to be. It's a really good blocker. It's a 6-6, 11-11, and 18-18 if you put it in front of something. Uh, if you don't put it in front of something, it's just, like, bad. But you're always going to put it in front of something. Uh, we've got Brood Horror, which is a card I've not actually played a lot with. Whenever you play a creature... Uh, Brute Horror gets smaller and that creature gets bigger. Uh, one thing the card doesn't tell you is that if you play a card that ha makes multiple creatures, uh, like the Roaming Warclaw, and it Brute Horror is only a 1 1, it'll actually give both creatures the buff, even though it can't. It'll shrink itself to negative 1, negative 1, and then give both creatures the buff. Uh, and then Torg My Bender. Torg is not, like, super exciting. It is a decent card. It's really good at making a creature get out of range. Like, it's really good with Shark Plate Delver. But I think it's a worse version of Brute Horror in this regard. Even though uh, Torgrimander can only give health, and you can also use it to heal yourself if you really want to, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to try out Brute Horror. It's a card I've not played with. You can also sacrifice the like a small Brute Horror to Spirit Leash and Corpse Crawler. Hmm. This pick's kind of difficult. Uh, we're not taking Gloom Swarm, Necroflay, or Dirge Banshee, because they're too situational. So that leaves us with Roaming Warclaw and Sharp uh, Swamp Moss Ancient. Swamp Moss Ancient is really big. Uh, it's a 7 7 and a 12 12. It just does not have a rank 3. Like, this isn't a graphical bug, it just does not have a rank 3. Uh, it'll, you play it this first time, it's a 7 7, which is incredible at rank 1. And then the next time you play it, and every other time you play it, it's just going to be a 12 12. Which, you know, is decent enough, right? It's a great card. I just don't know if it's better than Roaming Warclaw, because in uh, in this fact, in this faction pair, I tried to draft like S Spring Dryads and stuff like that, and Roaming Warclaw is simply the best uh, multiple creature creature. I think this pick's really close. I wouldn't fault you for picking the Swamp Monster Ancient. It's probably the like right pick here, but I'm gonna try Roaming Warclaw because I like drafting for synergy too much. Um, all these cards are kind of bad. I'm going to take Deep Branch Prowler just because it's very big at level 1. I can play it in rank 2 if I need to. And if you pump it, it has Breakthrough. So it's actually kind of a big threat that will always get through some damage. Uh, it's much better than Scavenge Scorpion, which has Regenerate. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Or images. So we've got Gloom Reaper Witch, which is not good. Ghost Scale Cobra, which is awful. It's a blocker that <laughs> it takes multiple turns to kill the creature it blocks. It's not very good. Uh, so I guess I'll just take another Deep Branch Prowler. I don't really like having multiple mana. Ooh, Spring Dryad. So I'm getting rewarded here for the Roaming Warclaw pick. Spring Dryad is just one of those cards like Shard Plate Delver that makes you, you have to deal with it very soon within them putting it down or it'll just get out of control. Uh, cards in this pack is either Rolling Oracle or Shark Plate Delver. I'm going to take the Delver because I like those cards that just take over the game on their own. And Rolling Oracle is not one of those cards. Um, I don't have any poison for Dissolve, and it's a really situational card. Venom Fang is very good, but I don't think it's better than Grove Matriarch. Grove Matriarch gives me the Seedling that I can Spirit Leash away, and the Seedling also pumps the Spring Dryad, so... We're gonna pick that. Uh, Rot Wonder is like a Gloom Reaper Witch. It's either Uteradon Mall or Graveborn Glutton. Right? Because I don't want Necroflay. Yeah, Necroflay is worse than these two creatures. I, hmm. I think Uteradon Mall is the pick because it's a little bigger. It's actually a lot bigger. And I don't think I need the damage from Graveborn Glutton that makes it worth playing. Yeah, I'll just take the Mauler. Ooh, Dendrify. Uh, this is one of the best removal spells in the game. Uh, sort of. In draft, it's not incredible because you're playing with 
like commons and rares mostly. But Dendrify can make anything a 6 6. Like it, uh, a huge Shard Plate Delver, like a 10 10 Shard Plate Delver, a huge Spring Dryad, it just turns it into a 6 6 Tree Folk. And it's good because it's soft gated, which means it can target things that are on the level above it. So at rank 1, it can kill or replace level 2 things. At rank 3, it can replace anything. Or rank 2, it can replace anything. And at rank 3, it's free, which means it just doesn't cost a spell. So we're going to take that. It's much better than Zathene Hulk. I do not like Perdition Guard over Cold a Week. And I can take another Spring Dryad. I actually don't have very many targets for the Spring or things to work with the Spring Dryad. I don't only have a Grove Matrix, which is okay, and a Roaming War Claw, which is great. But I still think it's better than Torrent Witch and Venom Thing, which are the other two picks. Hmm. I could take Infernal Visage, or I could take Strength in Numbers. Those are the two best cards in this pack for me. Uh I think Infernal Visage is a little better. Strength in Numbers is like overbearingly good in ranks 2 and 3, but its rank 1 is not good at all. It's like worse than uh, Enrage, which is plus 3 plus 3 rank 1. This generally averages around plus 2 plus 2 or plus 3 plus 3, but sometimes it can just be plus 1 because you're losing a creature uh, in order to play the spell. Like you're not playing a creature instead, you're playing the spell. So I'm going to drop the Infernal Visage. Giving regen to a big sharp plate over Spring Dry is also pretty nice. And we're going to take a Rolling War Claw. Because we already have, even though Delver is a little stronger than War Claw, with two Spring Dryads, I want to maximize my chances of getting this uh, Spring Dryads going. And the war, the Delver is like not going to help that goal as much. And I already have two of them, so I don't want to overload too much on sharp plate Delvers. Uh, the Scourge Hydra is a very good card. If I had like more Death Seekers or like this card's really strong in um aggressive strategies. This is I'm playing more of a board control strategy. If I were in Tempest, I'd probably like snap take Square Charger just because it's gigantic. And there's a, lo a lot of uh, four toughness creatures in Tempest. You can just put the damage on because they're gonna die anyway. But I'm gonna take Roaming Warlock over the Spring Dryads and the uh, Spirit Leash I have. Uh, Abyssal Brute's kind of like a walking Infernal Visage. You can put it in the side lane to make itself bigger, or you can put it in an off lane or the center lane. And whenever something enters the side lane, it gets bigger. This card's really, really, this card's better than Infernal Visage and Tempest because of the mobility. You can, like, put a Wind Primordial in the side lane, then move it out and put something else in the side lane, and it keeps the buff. But, unfortunately, these factions don't have any mobility outside of legendaries like Doomwing. Dusclaw, that sort of thing. Like the, the black dragons have mobility. Nothing in Uterra has mobility. Uh, that said, so it's not like exceptional in these factions, but it's probably still better than Gloomswire and Dreadbolt. I don't mind. Dreadbolt's actually a solid removal spell. Like it kills anything with health equal to its attack or health more or uh, attack more than its health. But it is level gated, which means I'm gonna have to play it in rank 1 in order for it to be useful in the for future ranks, which is not something I look for in spells. That's why Dendrify is so good, because you don't have to play it in rank 1. So I'm just going to take the Abyssal Brute, and then the Strength in Numbers. I, again, I like situational spells over bad or mediocre creatures. Wow, there's actually a lot of good cards in this pack. Hmm. I'm <laughs> not expecting such a hard decision. <clears throat> uh, 20 picks in. So we've got a I guess I'll just talk about them in order. Corpse Crawler is good for this sort of deck. I've only got Death Seeker, uh, two Raptors, and a Seedling with the Grove Matriarch to sacrifice to it, which is okay. Uh, Necromoeba is an incredible card that puts. It's got a high amount of region. It's a really big body, and whenever it gets hit, whenever it gets hurt, it'll put an Oozling in one of your spaces, and the Oozling is actually starts at a one one. And goes up to a 3-3 three, three, and then a 5-5. Five, five, which is sweet. Because uh, like cards like Roaming War Cloud don't even scale at all. It'll always put a 1-1 one, one into play. But Necromoeba's creature gets bigger as it does. Uh, it has a little lower power than you'd like usually at per rank. But it's so big and it's so tough to kill. That doesn't really matter. 
Um, and it making Uzlings also pumps up Spring Dryad and stuff like that. Sacrifice targets for Spirit Leash. Uh, we've got Grove Hunters is a really solid card. It's just not on the same level as these two heroics, which I'll talk about Sorrow Maiden next. Uh, Sorrow Maiden's an incredible control card. It a, it's a little on the small side. Uh, at rank one and two, but having the ability to once you uh, I guess on tap with it isn't correct. That's a magic term, but basically once it comes to your turn after you've played it and it's still alive. Uh, it takes over the board state. Like they have to deal with it because it'll kill anything with power equal to it, or with power four or less. Like it's a cold a week on a stick every single turn. It's very strong. Uh, it, that said, it's pretty small and it doesn't synergize with my deck nearly as well as Necromiva does. So I'm gonna take the Necromiva. But Saramain is. I don't think you can go wrong with either of these picks. Like I think Necromiva is a smidgen better. But if you take Smarrow Maiden, like. If you like, if you were in my place and you're drafting this tech and you took the Sorrow Maiden, I wouldn't hold it against you at all. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of like the pick before last, where it's just one card that's clearly better than the rest. Portal Shades really big at rank one, and whenever you rank up, it puts a random creature into play, so it's kind of like a free creature, and it's also just kind of big. Uh, like compared to Zithian Hulk right here, it's a force. It's a one power bigger than at every rank, I believe. Fourteen, seventeen. It's a fourteen eighteen, so it's a little weirder power distribution, but uh, it's just head and shoulders better than any of these cards. Venom Drinker is way too parasitic. It requires uh, no pun intended. It requires way too much poison, and Calamity Fiend I discussed I don't like already. Uh, it gets a decent card, but it's not on the level of Portal Shade, even though they do different things. Um, I think this pick's kind of tough. I could take. I'm not taking Scavenger Scorpion first off. So I can either take Venom Strike, which is it's probably too late in the draft to take Venom Strike. They're really good in multiples uh, because it gets Poison 4 and you can play extra Poison Strikes. This card does not scale as well as I thought it would. That's weird. Uh, I was, in my head I was comparing it with Storm Spear, which starts at 3. Like it does 3 damage and you can play additional Storm Spears this turn. And then the second form does 9 and the second one does 12, which is a lot. This one's only 4, 6, 8, which it's not as much as I thought it was. So I can either take Glutton or Spirit Cleave here. Glutton's just a solid creature for the deck. It doesn't really do anything special. Spirit Cleave is probably not actually what I want in my deck. Uh, because it destroys the creature with the highest health and it's level gated, I'm probably going to have to target my own creatures more often than not because of the like Portal Shade, Necromiba, and Brood Horror pumping my creatures. So I think I'll just take Glutton here. And I'm going to take a... Ooh, uh, so I can either take Corpse Crawler or Spirit Leash. Don't actually know which is better. Probably Spirit Leash since I have a Necromiba, which is a huge... Like a Necromiba and an Abyssal Brute, which are creatures with innate region. Yeah, I th think that's a little better than Corpse Crawler. I'm not actually sure. This I think this pick is close. I think I'm just going to take the Spirit Leash. Uh, if I take Corpse Crawler, it's fine, but... With an extra Spirit Leash, I can draw Spirit Leash more often, and I can kill all these Raptors and stuff I get and put it on like Deep Branch Prowler. It makes my Deep Branch Prowlers less bad, I think, is what tips up the scales towards Spirit Leash. Because uh, <laughs> Deep Branch Prowler is a card you really only want to play once. Like It doesn't scale at all. It gets plus one, plus one at every rank, which is horrible. So you want to make the most of you want to make the most of it the first time you play it. <clears throat> Um, I'm going to take the Gloom Reaper Witch over the Scavenger Scorpion. Uh, right? No, that's probably wrong. Yeah, Scavenger Scorpion does have a regen, so we'll go ahead and take it. Hmm. I could take on another Delver or Torrent Soldier. I think those are the two cards I want to pick. <clears throat> Torrent Soldier gives me a removal spell. Shark Plate Delver is gigantic. I, I Usually I just lean towards Shark Plate Delver, especially with two Visages and an Abyssal Brute. Uh, hmm. I could take another Abyssal Brute here, or I could take Grove Huntress. I think what, it's between those two cards. I don't want a third Spirit Leash, because I'm not rolling in creatures to sacrifice. I pretty much only have the, the three, plus if the Grove and the Necromiba. So I don't want another Spirit Leash. I could take Grove Huntress as sort of a more flexible Abyssal Brute. It's just like a pump spell on a stick. 
Uh, how does a Bissell Brood scale? Hmm. The thing about a Bissell Brood is it's a lot more, it's a lot less flexible than Grove Huntress because you can only give things in the side lane after you play the Abyssal Brood. As opposed to Grove Huntress, you can just give plus one plus one to whatever it's on the board. Hmm. And I'm not going to take the Mauler just because I'd rather have more pump creatures than more blockers. I already have some pretty good blockers with the Swarming War Claw, uh, the Cruel Glutton, and like the Matriarch. Like, I'm pretty set on just blocking. So it's either the Abyssal Brute. I think it's the Abyssal Brute. It's a little stronger effect. It's a little smaller than the Grove Huntress. Because Grove Huntress can pump itself. Like, at rank 3, it's actually 1615, which is pretty big. Whereas Abyssal Brute's only ever going to be a 1550 regen 3. So I'm going to pick the Abyssal Brute. And then follow it up with a Mauler. Because it's a solid blocker. Ooh, the Roaming War Claw. I'm, I'm gonna. I want to talk about. I'm not taking this card, but I want to talk about it because I think it's actually pretty good. Like it's a a four four at rank one, but if you banish a plant in your discard pile, it's a seven seven. That's it's probably best at rank one. So what you can do is if you draw this in like the second or third turn of rank one, and you have plants like Grove Matriarch, you haven't played yet. Like they're still level one. You can play the Torg My Guardian and r banish the plant in your deck because. It's better to thin your deck out in ranks for ranks two and three to draw your rank two cards, rather than drawing a, a rank one card. Uh, what's sweet about it? It it can also banish itself. Like it, as you can see, it's really small if you don't banish a plant, but it gets really big if you do. So you can actually play it on turn one if you want to for just a seven seven. You won't draw the rank two cards because you'll have to ban it. You won't draw your their rank two Torg my guardian because you'll have to banish it in order to pump it. But it's really flexible in that regard. Uh, it's a, a card I really like. I'm not taking it here because the war call is just too good with Spring Dryad and uh, like random stuff I already have. But and um, actually I actually think this pick's kind of close. Zombie Titan works well with my side lane crap. As Regen to make my uh, Spirit Leashes better. Grove Matriarch makes my Spring Dryad better, but it's harder to control. It's a little more reliable than Zombie Titan. And I feel like my side lanes are going to be so crowded. I still think the pick's zombie titan, though. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So that was the draft. Uh, let's see what we've got here. So, I think it's actually a pretty strong deck. Though, <laughs> I usually tend to think that when I'm drawing in this color combination, or this faction pair. It's <laughs> really a toss-up whether it actually comes to fruition or not. So I'm going to end the video here, and we'll go to round one in the next.